All right, how's it going everyone? Hope everyone had a nice gobble gobble turkey day. Today we do not have class, so this officially marks the end of the second week of a three week training program that I'm enrolled in here at Crowder College. So I thought I'd use today, thought it'd be productive and use it to do, uh, see how good I've gotten on a pre-trip. Of course, for those of you interested in getting your CDL, you know that after you take your permit test, the next step is to go and get your actual CD, your full CDL. And the, one of the major requirements on the road test is knowing how to do a pre-trip inspection. So I've been studying this for now for the past two weeks. I've run through a couple of these by myself during my off times. Um, and so I thought I would record myself to doing one and seeing how, how much I know, seeing if I miss anything. So I'm going to go through the CDL uh, pre-trip inspection, which means that I'm not going to inspect every single piece of equipment like you normally would on a regular pre-trip inspection once you're working. Uh, I'm going to do what's required to pass the CDL exam. So once I post this video, just, so, just if you're curious and wondering why maybe I didn't hit the right side of you know, the right side of the, the tires and only the left side of the tires, it's because on, on the CDL, you only have to get one side of it. You only have to get one side of it correct. You don't have to do both sides. If, if, if it's the same on both sides, you don't have to do it for the test. Now you will have to inspect those items when you start working and actually do your pre-trip inspections every day when you're out on the road. But for the CDL portion, you only have to get uh, you know, one side, you only have to let them know that you know the knowledge of what you're going to be checking. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the front of my truck and I'm going to identify the daylights, the daylights, the high beams. My lenses are not cracked or broken. My right turn signal, my left turn signal, four way flashers, not cracked, clean, not broken. I'm gonna identify that my reflectors, or that my, excuse me, my clearance lights on the top are all, are not broken, cracked, or missing. I'm gonna identify that the overall front of my truck is clean, no bends, no bends, no cracks anywhere. Everything looks intact, license plate is present. And then I'm gonna do a quick look under the, under the truck to make sure that I don't see any any visible puddles or leaks coming from the truck and then from here I'm gonna open up my engine compartment so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now okay once I have the engine compartment open the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a general overview of the engine so I'm gonna look and see just do an overview of the engine to make sure that I do not see any visible leaks anywhere on the engine once again I'll double check just to make sure there's not any puddles on the ground signifying that there might be any leaks and then i'm also going to do an overview of all the hoses and wiring to make sure that everything looks like it's properly clamped like there's no visible there's no visible tears in any of the hosing or cabling everything's properly clamped and secure just an overview look of the engine in general and so then i'm going to start off with everything on the left side of the engine starting off with the oil with the oil dipstick it's in place properly secured you would then you don't necessarily have to check it for the for the exam but you can take it out and check and make sure that the oil level is in between it make sure that it's full should be put that back on there then you want to move on to the oil cap make sure that the cap is not cracked broken that it's properly secured and that there's no visible leaks around so that's good there so then for me what i like to do is the way that i was taught i kind of take from there 
and I like to move in systems and I like to move in kind of a direction. So this way I feel like I don't miss anything. So I move on to the next closest thing, which is going to be the power steering fluid reservoir. It's got a cap that's secure, not broken. The level is, is in the proper, you know, you check the level to make sure it's properly in between add and full. And it is. In this case, the engine's cold, so I would check it here to make sure that it's in between the add and the fuel lines. Make sure that it's properly mounted, that the bolts are the bolts are secure. The bolt would be back here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the, the, it would be properly secure. It's not loose. It's not cracked or broken. Mounts are properly uh, properly clamped, secured. Then you will move on to the actual hoses of the power of the power steering reservoir you'd make you check the condition of the hoses to make sure they're not ripped frayed no bubbling properly clamped and no visible leaks on the hoses then you would move on to the actual uh, power steering pump it would say that it's mount that it's mounted securely bolts are not missing there's no cracks and no visible leaks on it. It is also a gear driven uh, power steering pump. The way you would know that is because there's no belt on it. So it is, it's gear driven. You'll signify that. So then I like to move from the hose that goes here, goes about right here. I like to move down and come over here to, this, to the gear box, but you have to identify that the hose here is not, uh, that the power steering hose is not uh, frayed uh, cut and it's properly mounted and secure and no visible leaks I mean you know you see that there is some stuff here but and it happens with these with the vehicles you know you get some buildup and residue but if it doesn't look like it's leaking then you know at least at least you're telling them that because because the thing about the test is that there might actually be a leak happening you don't know it because it's not your truck so you don't really know but you know visibly you might see that something's leaking but they just want to know that you know to check for that that's the key to, to the exam it's knowing that it's, they want to know that you have the knowledge to be able to complete a pre-trip examination a pre-trip you know inspection so okay so i'm moving so i take it from there i move on to the actual gearbox i want to say that the uh, the bolts are mounted securely none of them are missing uh, that it doesn't look cracked or broken and doesn't look like there's any visible leaks around the gearbox any hoses that are attached to it are not frayed cut clamped securely no leaks on the any of the hoses coming from it I mean to or from it it's a uh, and then from there I go on to the actual steering rod and I want to say that it is mounted securely to the gearbox that there's no that there's no, no visible leaks on it. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. It's mounted securely. Doesn't have any side-to-side -side give. There's no metal metal shavings on the bolts or on the joints. Excuse me. So then we're clean there. We're, so then we're good to go there. Then I move on to the actual steering linkage. The steering linkage is going to come from here to here. So we move on to here. You want to check uh, that it's not bent, cracked, broken, that there's no illegal welds on it. And use this one piece here. This piece right here is part of your steering linkage. It goes all the way here. Then that right there is a push rod that goes from, the, from this tire to the other side. And they're clamped securely with, with uh, castle bolts and cotter pins and you want to be able to point out those four cotter pins so one here castle nut that's secure with the cotter pin then you want to go to this one and point out that one same thing then you want to point out the two that are on the tie rod so there'll be one that'll be right there you can see it kind of in the center of the screen there and that is in the same location on the other side of the truck for the exam, I don't think that you have to walk over there and actually point it out. You just have to let them know that you know that it's over there and that it should be secure in place with a cotter pin. Not cracked or bent. So then that's it for the steering linkage. Steering linkage is good to go. You know, you just, you know like I said, not cracked, broken, no visible, no, everything looks in place, not bent. And then from there, I, I move on to the suspension because everything's the suspension mounts are right here behind everything here. They're secured. It's properly secured. All bolts are in place, not missing. 
Then I would move on to the actual leaf springs. The leaf springs are mounted securely. No bolts are missing. There's going to be bolts here and there's bolts over there. All those are secure in place, not missing. The actual leaf springs themselves are not cracked, bent, or broken. They are properly aligned. They are not, they're not lining up. They're lined up right on top of each other. They are also mounted securely with two U-bolts uh, here and here. The U-bolts are all mounted securely and not missing. So then to finish off the suspension, I would move to the shock absorber. It's mounted securely with two, with a bolt on the top and a bolt on the bottom that are not missing. And there's no visible leaks. You know, it's not cracked, bent or broken, no visible leaks on the, on the shock. Then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the frame because the frame's right here. So you, on the frame, you just wanna say that it's not, cr it's not cracked, bent or broken, and there's no illegal welds on the frame. So then you can, so then from here, you can either go take care of the right, of the things on the right side of the engine and then come back to the tire. Or if you feel like you're, you, you're kind of in a good flow, you can do all the tire and then move on to the right. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the right side of the engine so that I don't forget about it. So I'm gonna walk over here to the right side of the engine and I'm gonna say, the first thing I'm gonna start off with is the coolant reservoir. The coolant reservoir should be at full. In this case, this one is not, <laughs> it's kind of hitting towards that minimum. But once again, this is a truck that I don't, that I haven't driven here at the school. So I've never seen this before. It's the first time that I've seen this coolant uh, level, but it should be at full. You, you want to know that it's there full, that the cap is secure, the cap is in place and secure, and that there's no, there's not any leaks visible on the reservoir, not cracked, bent or broken. All the cabling is in place, all the wiring is in place, mounted securely and not frayed. Everything's secure. Any hoses coming from the reservoir are also not, not frayed, cut, and they're mounted securely with clamps. Then you would move to the what's at the top here in this engine, which is the air compressor. Air compressor is up here. It's mounted, uh, bolts are mounted securely. None of them are missing. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Uh, it is also a belt-driven a belt driven air compressor. All the hoses coming from the air compressor are not cracked, bent, or broken. There's no visible leaks on the any of the hoses. And the belt is also not cracked, frayed, and it's properly in place. It's properly in place. There's no wear and tear on the belt. I mean, a little, there's a little bit, but you want to say that, you know, there's not like excessive amounts of wear and tear on it. Then we move down to the alternator. The alternator is also belt driven. It is secured. All bolts are secured and not missing. All the wiring attached to the alternator is properly mounted. It is not frayed, cut, uh, spliced. There's also no burn marks on, on the connections. Since this belt is the serpentine, since this belt that's on here is your serpentine belt, you want to go ahead and just mention it now so that way you don't forget it. Just mention the same thing. No excessive uh, wear on the serpentine belt. It's, uh, there's no fraying, no cuts. Everything is, and then you kind of just want to feel the ridges on it to make sure that everything is wearing evenly to make sure there's no uh, dents, indentures or anything in the belt. It should have a little bit of give, but not a ton of give about three quarters of a give of give then you want to move down to the water pump the water pump is also belt driven as you can see you want to make sure to uh, once again say the condition of the belt that it's not it's not excessively frayed uh, there's no rips cuts or tears on the belt it's mounted secure all bolts are mounted securely none are missing it's, this one should have four bolts on it two over here and two on the other side that you are a little bit difficult to see you might have to get in there to really see the other ones i'm trying to see if i can get them in the camera but um, but either way you want to just mention that they're secured and that they're not missing and uh that there's no visible leaks on the water pump you can also come under if you want to see if you really want to get technical with it but yeah, you want to mention that. 
Then the last thing you need to mention over here on this side is the exhaust. So the exhaust will be right here. You want to mention that the exhaust is not bent, cracked, or broken, and that there's no signs of leaking. If there was, you'd see uh, you'd see a lot of a uh, black soot around the connections, but everything's mount. All the clamps are mounted securely. There's no leaks on the exhaust. Then that's it for the right side of the engine. I believe I got all that right. So like I said, you do have the same things over on this side that you do on the other side, but because you already mentioned them on the other side, you don't necessarily have to mention them here for the test. When, if it's just, if you were doing pre-trip inspections once you start working, then yes, you will have to check all this stuff, but for the sake of the test, you do not have to check both sides. But yeah, so and see, here's the other side of that of that tie rod with that fourth uh, castle uh, castle nut and cotter pin down there. All right, so let's go back to the right side and let's start working on the tire. I'm gonna move on to the tire system, which is gonna, which I'm actually gonna start with the braking system, which I'm gonna start with the hoses since they come off of the frame. I'm gonna say that the hoses are not ripped, cut, or you know, torn, frayed. Uh, that they're clamped securely. That there's no visible leaks on the hoses. So no visible leaks. So that brings me to the brake chamber. I'm going to say that the brake chamber is not cracked, bent, or broken. It is securely mounted. No bolts are missing. Uh, all the clamps, the clamp is secure. And there are no visible leaks on the brake chamber. Then I move on to the slack adjuster. On the slack adjuster, I'm going to say the slack adjuster is mounted securely in place. A bolt is in place with a cotter pin. And the push rod, I'm going to see if I can get a good angle at the push all right, I'm gonna get a good look at the push rod. The push rod is in place, is, is it is not bent, and there are no visible leaks on the push rod. And you should not be able to pull the slack adjuster back more than an inch with the brakes released. So you want to mention that. Once you got that done, then you move, then you're done with the braking system. And now, or you're done with the braking system over here, then you move on to the inside of the tire. And from here, you're gonna talk about the, first you're gonna talk about the linings. The linings of the tire are right here. If this is a drum system, which this is, you're gonna talk about the linings here, that they're not thin, they're not cracked. There's no visible leaking on the linings. And then you're gonna go immediately to the outside, which is the drum area. And you're just gonna mention that the drum has no cracks, bends, and that there's also no visible leaking on any of the drum. Then that's it, then you're done with the braking system once you talk about that. If it's a disc brake system, you wanna talk about the brakes, you wanna talk about the disc, uh, you wanna talk about the rotor, you wanna talk about the actual pads, um, but in this case, this is a drum system, so that's what I'm going off of. So then I move on to the actual tire, which I'm gonna check the IDC of the tire, which is the inflation, um, condition and depth so it's properly inflated just do a quick little pound check here i don't have the tool with me so i just pound it with my hand uh, i would check the air pressure with the tie with the air pressure tire gauge not going to do that right now but i know to do that um, then i'm going to check the the actual overall condition of the tire to make sure that there's no foreign there's no nail screws foreign objects in it the threading of the tire should be at four of the drive tires up here should be four thirty seconds of an inch of tire depth and they should be wearing evenly it shouldn't have any uneven wear it should all be wearing evenly across the tire and you want to inspect the sidewalls for any bubbles or foreign objects present there are none so it's clean so now you've checked the overall condition of the tire you're good to go there then you want to move on to the wheel, to the rim, and on the rim you want to just mention that they're not, there's no cracks, no bends, no illegal welds on the wheel. It is secured, all lug nuts are secured, none are missing, and there's no visible, they're not loose. No rust trails on the wheel are present, so, so they, that way you know that there's not any lug nuts that are loose. Then you move to the hub oil seal. It is secured with a cap. The cap is secured. All the bolts are secure in place. None are missing, and there's no visible leaks on the on the on the 
oil seal and you check the level of the oil and should be at full and then the last thing you check on the tire or at least this is the way i do it just because i want to make sure i don't forget it is the tire is the valve stem the valve stem is not bent and it's secured with the cap now in this case this one doesn't have your traditional cap on it it's actually one of those sealed ones that has the sealed tip on it so then all you need to do is put in your your air pressure gauge or your or your air um, your, your air uh, you know to put in your air and whatnot and uh, it'll just push this little tab in and you can shoot the air in through there and then when you pull it out it just seals it back up so you don't necessarily need a traditional cap on these um, and that's it for the wheel wheels done now i move on to the next the next piece of it i like to do is I like to move in pieces like i said so i'm going to move to the side the driver's side of the truck and the first thing i'm going to check is to make sure that the side mirror is the side mirrors are mounted securely to the truck they're not cracked or broken my my driver's side window is clean not cracked my my steps are mounted securely no missing bolts they're not, they're not broken then i'm going to check the actual condition of the door starting with the actual door handle the handle is secure in place opens properly then i'm going to go to the inside of the door on the hinges and mention that none of the hinges are bent they're in place the door lining is not ripped torn it's in place properly in place and I'm just going to make sure that the door closes properly and it does and that's it for the condition of the of the, all this stuff here don't necessarily need to mention that but all this is fine then you don't what I was told is that you don't have to mention the diesel exhaust fluid cap or the tank uh, but you, but if you're an overachiever, then you show, totally can. Just mention that the diesel exhaust fluid cap is in place, secured tightly. If you want to mention about the tank as well, you can talk about the straps and everything on that on that part of it as well. Uh, don't need to mention any of this on the test, so you can move on to the back of the track of the tractor, starting with the gas tank. You want to mention? I'm going to mention that the straps are properly in place that there's no uh, that there's no bends or cracks no visible leaks of gasoline from the uh, from the tank the cap is in place and securely mounted to the tank securely tightened i just untightened it but i tightened it back up then you can start i like to start off going from the inside to the outside of the back so i'm going to start with just hit my head <laughs> hit my head with the air hoses i want to start with the exhaust the exhaust is not cracked bent or broken it's properly it's mounted uh, securely no bolts are missing and uh that's an interesting cut there uh this is a, once again this is a truck that i haven't used before so i don't think that that's a uh <laughs> a factory cut hole i think somebody actually cut that but anyways there's no visible leaking there's not any excessive black soot on the uh on the exhaust pipe so i think we're good there the drive shaft here is also not bent cracked or broken you just want to mention that about the drive shaft Feel free to go under and look at it from a, from a bottom view if you want to, but that's what you have to mention about that. Uh, you can also, while you're back here, you can you can mention about the torque rod assembly, which is this rod that goes from this end, which goes from this end to that end over there. You just want to mention that that is also not cracked, bent, or broken. Secured, all bolts are secured and not missing on it. Then you're done with this part right here and we can come back out. We can start coming back out to the frame, to the back part of the frame, which you also want to mention is not cracked, bent or broken and there's no illegal welds on the frame. Um, so what I like, once again, I like to move down because I want to get this whole thing done before I start doing all the other stuff. So I'm actually already going to come to the back of the tractor, to the rear of the tractor. And I'm going to mention the mud flaps are in place. They're not torn 
mounted securely, no bolts are missing. The and there's and the DOT DOT tape is properly in place. My left turn, my left and right turn signal four-way flashers and reverse lights are not cracked, broken, or missing. Then I can move back over. Now I can move back over here and actually start doing what's going to be what's what I feel is going to start being kind of the repetitive side of of doing this pre-trip inspection from what I've what I've taught what I've learned and kind of taught myself is that everything all the systems kind of work the same with some exceptions of some uh, some things are different in the back than they are in the front so I'm going to start now with the suspension mounts again so the suspension is going to be the first thing I'm going to check starting with the mounts all bolts are secured in place none are missing it's not bent cracked so that's good there then i'm going to move to the leaf springs over here and it's the same concept here they're bolted securely here one at the top one at the back uh, bolts in the back are in place not missing bolted securely the actual springs themselves are not bent cracked or broken they are properly aligned and they're secure with two u-bolts that that are not missing any bolts mounted securely then I do this I do the same thing I can, you can come kind of in between the two tires here and you can see the ah, try not to fall over while you're doing this <laughs> and you can see the shock absorber there and you want to mention that the shock absorber has a bolt is bolted securely on the top on the bottom and the top it's over here overhead I'm not sure if you can see that but there's a bolt there none of them are missing and there's no it's not cracked broken no signs of leaks on the shock absorber then the difference here is the airbag on the rear suspension the airbag is mounted securely with bolts on the top and the bottom no bolts are missing you would have to kind of go over the top of this to see the bolt up there but you would know it's not missing because this thing wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be securely set right there then you want to mention the condition of the actual airbag itself it's not cut it's not cut freed properly inflated and there's no leaks no visible leaks on the airbags then that's it for the suspension there's that's it for the suspension because the suspension is the same as you go to the back set of the tires so you don't necessarily have to mention that again because you've already mentioned it here so you don't have to mention it twice because it's the same setup back here as it is over here on the on the front side of the rear on the first set of rear tires over here so you don't have to mention it here for the test now once again when you actually start doing your pre-trips when you start working you will have to mention you will have to check all of this stuff to make sure that it's good and everything's working properly but for the sake of the test you only have to mention one set and from what I was told, it doesn't matter what set you start with. If you want to start with the tire right here, or if you want to start with the wheel setup over here, it's fine as long as you understand that it's, you know, the rear system is the rear, you know, suspension and brake system. Which brings us to the brake system. That's where we're gonna go from here. So we go from the suspension to the brake system. Once again, you wanna start, I'm gonna start with the hoses of the brake system. I'm gonna make sure that the hoses are not that the hoses are not cut, frayed, damaged. They're mounted, all clamps are mounted securely and that there's no visible leaks on any of the brake hoses. Then it should lead into the brake chamber over here. And it's the same thing. They're, the brake chamber is mounted securely. It's not cracked, bent or broken. The clamps are secure and there's no visible leaks on the brake chamber. Then from the brake chamber, we go to the slack adjuster. And this is the fun part for me. This is, a, this is the fun part for me because the slack adjuster is right behind this brake chamber, which from this angle that I'm sitting at, it's very difficult to see. So you either have to move once again in between the tire to kind of get in there and look and see if you can find that slack adjuster. It's right up in there. It's right there, right there. I tried to center it in the video right there. That's your slack adjuster and push rod. 
The push rod is not bent. No visible leaks. And the slack adjuster is secure in place with the bolt and cotter pin. And it has, it should only have an inch of give with the brakes released. You can put your hand in there and actually pull it if you want, but that's where everything's at right there. Uh, here's an interesting part about this slack adjuster, actually. It's the first time that I've seen this one. I don't see a pin and a cotter pin on this side. It's kind of interesting. I wonder if it's back here. Hey, how about that? I'm trying to shoot a video on how to do a pre-trip inspection, and I actually might have found something bad with this truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay no 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 it was there it was there okay because it's the same there it's just in a different it's just in a different a slightly different location so you can see that that con that that bolt is there and the cotter pins on the other side right there yeah, i don't know if you can see it or not but it's right there mention that you know push rods not bent all that fun stuff and then and then we move out yeah. Okay. Once I'm done with the with the brake chamber and the slack adjuster, then I do the same thing that I did starting with the brake linings and the and the drums. So the brake linings on here are going to be right there. I'm trying to see if I can get a good, there's your brake linings right there. I kind of centered it in the video. The linings are not uh, dangerously thin. They're not cracked. No visible leaks on the linings. And then the drum right on the outside, this, this whole piece right here, is not cracked, bent or broken. And there's no signs of any brake leakage on the drum either. Then from there, because this is a single tire setup and not and not a bud wheel system, I don't have to check the, uh, the bud wheels on this. Some some tractors have budded wheels on the rear, so you would change up how you check that just a little bit. You would basically just check the the middle of the budded tires to make sure there's no foreign objects and that the and that the wheel is not cracked, bent, or broken. Uh, but in this case, it's a single tire, so now I can move on to the IDC of this tire the inflation, the depth and condition. So the inflation, it's properly, it seems like it's got a lot of air in it. I would check it with the air pressure gauge. That and the depth of the tire should not be any less than two 30 seconds of an inch. Everything should be, all the tire should be wearing, should be, uh, the threading should be wearing evenly. I'm looking for four, any nail screws foreign objects through the tire i'm going to the sidewalls and making sure there's no there's no signs of bubbling on the sidewalls of the tire no um no nail screws um uh, foreign objects on the sidewalls looks good to me so then i move on from the tire to the wheel again to the rim on the on the back side want to make sure that it's not cracked bent or broken and there's no illegal welds on the wheel all the lug nuts are in place and they are tightly secured there's no signs of rust trail signifying that there any of the lug nuts are loose then i move on to the hub oil seal back here there's not a visible oil level gauge it is mounted securely. All bolts are all bolts are secure, not not missing. There's no signs of any leak. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Then the last thing is the valve stem. I want to make sure it's not bent, properly secure with the cap. In this case, like I said before, it's got the internal little little push button thing in there, so it doesn't necessarily have to have a an old school cap on it because it is properly capped. And then that's it for the tire. You do not have to mention on the test the condition of the tire right behind it because it's the same kind of tire. Same came, same setup, so you don't have to mention it and go over it again twice. So I am now officially done with the actual tractor part of the pre-trip. Uh, now I'm actually gonna start with the trailer 
uh, part of it, starting with the coupling. So I'm gonna move on to that next. Okay, so moving on to the coupling side of the pre-trip inspection. Now I'm gonna go through all the coupling portions of the, of the trailer. So the first things that I'm gonna check is I'm gonna actually come over here and start with the fifth wheel. I'm gonna start kind of from, from this way, come back and then work my way back in. So starting with the fifth wheel, the fifth wheel platform is not bent, cracked, or broken. It's properly greased. It has all, all the bolts are properly secure, not missing. Then you move on to the platform. The platform is not bent, cracked, or broken. All the mounting bolts are in place and not missing, tightly secured. You want to mention that the uh, there's a couple of differences in this one. This is a mounted fifth wheel, so it's not a sliding one. So you don't have to mention anything. If it was a sliding one, you would mention that the slider, the slider is properly in place. The platform's not cracked or broken. Um, you would just kind of mention about that. That's the biggest difference between the two. This is a mounted one, so you don't have to mention all that if it's a mounted one. Uh, you want to mention that the safety latch is is visible. That's in the lock position properly in place not cracked in or broken you want to mention uh, you want to mention that the space between the trailer apron and the fifth wheel that there's no gap no visible gap in this case there is not it is properly attached to the trailer and then from here you would go to the inside of the fifth wheel which we're going to go under to look at that let's see let me make sure i don't hit my head and from here i'm not sure if you'll be able to see it i'm gonna try to see if i can get a good video of it but from here you would check i want to check that the locking jaws are not bent or broken properly secured around the king pin of the trailer and while i'm also looking at this i want to check the condition of my king pin to make sure that that is also not bent or loose everything looks good there and that is it for the fifth wheel if i miss something let me know this, vi this video is kind of a dual educate education plus a kind of hopefully if you watch it and you catch me that i miss something tell me so that i can remember when i go i have to go for my i'm gonna have to take my test later on next week but i'm feeling pretty good about this so now that i'm done with the fifth wheel stuff i actually can move on to the apron the trailer apron is this right here and it's not bent or broken there's no uh no rust holes other you know no rust holes visible it is properly welded onto the trailer you want to mention that you know all the way through and then you want and then i want to mention that none that all the, the rivets and the bolts are all securely mounted and they're none are missing on the apron and from the apron i actually come out to the hoses starting with the air hoses my air hoses are not cut frayed damaged properly properly secured to the glad hands they're properly mounted to the tractor with the spring you can also mention if you want uh to the locking jaws if you wanted to mention that the that you have the uh the rubber uh the rubber pieces here in between you can mention that too it's not a necessity but you know this would signify that there's no air leaks in any of the hoses or anything like that then i move on to the electrical cabling the cabling is not cut frayed or spliced it is properly latched on to the safety latch and it's mounted securely to the tractor with the spring all the clamps are secure So we're good there. And you can also come over here and make sure that it's securely mounted to the safe to the safety latch over here as well. 
everything is secure, you know, your hose is not cut, all that fun stuff. Then you're done with the air hoses. Then we move on to the actual condition of the headboard, which is this big, which is all of this here. And you just want to make sure that there's no rips, bends, and then all the rivets and bolts are in place and not missing throughout the entire headboard. While you're looking at the headboard, you want to go ahead and mention that you have a clearance light at the top. I'm not sure. And this this trailer actually does not have, actually it's, it's very, very small, but it's like right there where my finger is. There's a clearance, there's usually at least one or two clearance lamps on the corner, on the corners of these trailers. You just want to mention that they're there, that they're, that they're not cracked or broken. Then you want to move on to the condition. I like to move on to the condition of the side of the tractor. Uh, I want to mention the same things like I did with the hair, with the headboard that there's no rips. Uh, there's no rips in the side of the trailer walls. That all the trailer wall, that the trailer wall is secure. All rivets and bolts are present and not broken. That DOT tape is affixed in the proper location throughout from the beginning of the from the beginning of the trailer all the way to the end of the trailer. And then from here, I can go ahead and keep moving to, I can, I'm gonna move all the way down and then I'm gonna work my way back up again. Cause I wanna make sure that I don't miss the left turn signal, four way flasher, marker light here on the left side is clean, not cracked or broken. Want to mention your ABS light is is also clean, cracked, not broken, and then your left marker uh, marker light over here is also clean, not broken. Then I'm gonna work my way back up here so I can actually go under the trailer and starting off with the landing gear. I want to make sure that the landing uh, the landing gear is not cracked, bent, or broken. It's mounted securely. The feet are also not bent, cracked. They're they're all they're positioned all the way up. The landing gear rod is is secure in place and not missing. It's securely latched to the landing gear. The cross members of the landing gear are also not bent and there's no illegal welds on the landing gear. Then while I'm also down here, I want to mention the cross members of the bottom of the trailer. Those are all the, the this, it's all the cross members that go from one side to the other. All, you want to mention the condition of all of them from the front of the trailer to the, all the way to the back are also not bent are broken and that there's no illegal welds all throughout the entire trailer. Then I'm done there. Then I wanna move on. I'm gonna move on to the back part under here. And I'm gonna start with the tandem slide. The tandem slide is secure in place. There's no cracks, bends, no illegal welds on the on the tandem slide the there's two pin there's a pin here a pin back there i'm not sure if you can see it but there's a pin over there close to the uh to the rear tires over there and then there's two pins on the other side they're also in place not missing and uh this place you shouldn't be able to mention the condition of your tandem bar but the tandem bar is not present on this truck <laughs> this trailer <laughs> the tandem bar is not here so maybe i'm missing something here but it'd be kind of hard to slide these tandems without the tandem bar but tandem bar is not present but you would mention the condition of the tandem bar and uh you just mentioned that it's not cracked bent or broken that it's in place in this case it's not but you know it should be there. I don't, I don't even know if they drive this particular truck that I decided to do this pre-trip on. It's just been sitting over here, so it's probably not even in service. But anyways, so from here, I want to go to the hoses. I want to mention that the air hoses 
are not cut, frayed, no visible leaks on any of the hoses, that they're mounted securely but with two springs here in this case because they're not coiled hoses they have to be there has to be a spring here and a spring here they're mounted securely and clamped securely and that the and you want to make sure that i mentioned that the hoses are mounted above the rear axles so these need to make sure that they're mounted above the rear axles that's what you want to mention that's a bad angle it makes it look it's not but it is <laughs> then from here it's kind of the same process again now we're kind of getting to the rear tire system of the of the trailer now and so it'd be kind of the same thing so start off with the you know you want to start off with the with the uh the suspension system when you're looking at the suspension system, you're, it's a, it might be a little bit different on the rear of the trailer. You may not, it may only be air. Typically, the rear of trailers is usually going to be an air suspension. You're typically never really going to see a leaf suspension back here. So you would start off with whatever with whatever you see. In my case, I would I see that there's that you know I got the shock absorbers here. So my shock absorbers are molted or uh, bolted securely bolts on the top and the bottom are not missing and there's no visible leaks on the shock absorber i move on to the airbag the airbag is mounted securely with bolts on the top and the bottom none are missing the condition of my airbag is not torn damaged no visible leaks on my airbag it's properly inflated then I would move. Uh, then I would move on to the condition. Then I would move on to the brakes. Excuse me, because that should be it for the suspension. Then you want to move on to the brake lines. Your brake lines start kind of up here, and you want to mention that your brake lines are not cut, frayed, no visible leaks properly secure then you move on to the brake chamber again same concept not cracked bent or broken clamps are secure no visible leaks on the brake chamber then the, then you want to move on to the slack adjuster the slack adjuster is going to be behind here i'm going to try to see if I can... all right so i just noticed as i was recording that uh, I got cut off when I was trying to show this slack adjuster on the rear, uh, on the rear of the, uh, of the tractor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. So where I ended off was I was gonna show you what the slack adjuster looked like on the tractor side of things. So I'm actually gonna lay down and see if I can get a good look at this. So after you check the condition of the brake chamber, you come over to the slack adjuster back here. It's this right here. There's your slack adjuster it's on the back of the brake chamber. With the push rod right there. Push rod is not bent. No leaking. Then you want to come to the slack adjuster. It is mounted securely with the bolt with a cotter pin. And with the brakes release, you should not be able to pull this slack adjuster back more than an inch. Okay, so I got that this time. <laughs> I just finished talking about that for like five minutes and didn't realize it wasn't recording because I couldn't see what my phone was doing. All right, so now after you come with the slack adjuster and the push rod, you come out to the brake linings of the rear wheels and you're going to look at the linings. I want to say that they're not, that they're not worn thin, they're not cracked, no visible signs of any leaks, the drum is not cracked, bent, or broken. No sign of any leaks on the drum. Now I'm gonna go to the wheel system. This is a butt wheel system. So the only difference between all the other tires that I've checked and these is that I'm actually gonna check in between and make sure that there's no bends or cracks in, the, in between the wheels and that there's no nail screws or foreign objects sitting in between the wheels. Then I come back and do my IDC, uh, make sure they're properly inflated. 
I would check the, the, the air pressure with the air pressure gauge. They should be wearing evenly. Tire depth should not be any less than two thirty seconds of an inch. There's no visible nails, screws, or foreign objects in the tire. And on my sidewalls, there's no visible bubbles and no nails, screws, or foreign objects on any of my sidewalls. And I'm going to come out to the wheel. The wheel is not, cr not cracked, bent, cranked. <laughs> Cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal welds on the wheel. All the lug nuts are tightened securely and none are missing. There are no signs of any rust trails on the wheel. The hub oil seal is not cracked, bent, or broken. All the bolts are present and mounted securely. The hub oil seal has a cap that's in place and I would check the oil level just to make sure that it's full. In this case, this thing is freaking dirty back here. So if I really wanted to, to really check the, the fluid level, I'd have to clean this whole entire window thing here so that I could see if it sits in the full for the ad. Right now I can't because this thing is dirty as hell, but at least I would know to, to check that, right? If I was out, if I was out in the field, I'd want to grab like a, a rag or something and clean this off so that I could see where the where the level's at. The last thing on check on the wheel is the valve stem. Make sure that it's not bent. It's got a cap in place. Once again, the back ones over here are also the same, uh, the same setup as the ones that I checked before. Don't need the traditional cap because it has the push button, the push button uh, stop here. So you would, but you would still want to make sure the cap is in place, right? Um, so that they were, so that we're done there. And because we did that here, you don't need to mention, you don't need to do it again over here. Just the same thing. For the testing purposes, once again, you only have to do one setup. You only have to do one whole setup. You don't have to do it again over here. You did it over here, you don't have to do it over here. So then we come to the back, which over here, you would mention that the mud flaps are are securely mounted. There's no there's no bolts missing. It's not torn. Properly mounted securely. And I think that's it for the back here. I mentioned that I mentioned that the tandem slide, you wanted to mention that it's not cracked, broken. It's uh, properly secured to the frame of the trailer. There's your, there's, your, there's your air tanks there, but you don't have to mention any of that on the test. I would, I would definitely check that when you start driving because you never know. You want to make sure that your air hoses are not leaking and that uh, your actual air tanks are not cracked or bent or broken. You never know, right? So always good practice just to check that, but for the purpose of the test, yeah, I don't think you need to check the air compressor on the, on the trailer. So then that brings me to the whole door system on the back of the trailer, which I would mention that my doors are not bent or broken. My hinges are not bent. No bolts are missing on any of my door hinges. My door latches are all present. Handle, handle is secure. Uh, for the purpose of the test, they don't make you open a door, so you don't have to, you know, open one up. You just want to mention that, you know, all the seals are in place, that, uh, you know, the latches are in place. There's nothing, all the bolts. It's, you know, everything's bolted securely. Uh, that's missing, so that's a problem for the left side. But typically, you really only need to open the right side first, anyways. Uh, <laughs> this trailer's all messed up. Uh, <laughs> I picked a hell of a trailer to do a pre-trip inspection with, huh? But anyways, uh, you want to mention the DOT tape is present along the back side of your doors, all the way across there. And then you want to mention everything under the doors, or you know, your latches too. 
your door, your safety, your safety chains on your on your doors are present. And you want to mention your left turn signal, your left and right turn signal, four-way flashers, revert, reverse brake lights. All your brake lights are all present, clean, cracked. Uh, your license plate is properly affixed to the back of the trailer. You want to mention that the DO, the DOT tape on the rear bar is present and that the bar is not bent, cracked, or broken. In this case, like I said, I picked a hell of a trailer to do a pre-trip inspection on because this thing is all messed up, but you would at least mention that. I'm not sure this is a trailer you'd want to take with you. <laughs> it's a little bit of work. And you also want to mention the marker, the clearance light, the marker lights on the top. Some trailers will have three marker lights on the top. Some of them will actually have the marker lights on the bottom. In this case, this one's on the top, so you would mention that they're, they're clean, they're not cracked or broken. And then you want to mention your safety latch. Your door safety latch over here on the side is also not missing and or broken. And then after that, I, mean, I think that's it. Like, if I'm not mistaken, once you have to go over to the right side of the of the trailer of the trailer, you, like you should never have to go to the right side for anything, as long as you mention that you have uh, a marker light, a right turn, a right turn signal marker light on the trailer, and then you also have a clearance light on the right side of it on the front of the trailer as well. Then you shouldn't really have to mention anything else because it's the same thing; it just becomes a repetitive thing. And the purpose of the test is to just make sure that you know everything that you're talking about when you go out on the field you'll have to check all of this stuff before you even get to go out but at least uh, for the sake of the test you would you would check if everything if there's more than one of it you just check one of it and it should get you through the uh, the CDL test you'd be able to get you to pass on that like I said this example that I decided to record today is totally horrible because that's a problem <laughs> that's not good that looks like uh, like like either a bad weld or something like that. that doesn't look good at all. I mean, look at the hell. Look at this thing. This thing's in terrible condition. I'm pretty sure they haven't used this trailer. I mean, then again, this is just a school. So, I mean, we're just learning in these things. Like, these are not things that I think you would actually put things in. Because I know I wouldn't take this trailer with me. I'd say this trailer is all messed up. I ain't taking this thing with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, differences. Some trucks will have catwalks back here and steps to, so that you can actually get on top of this rear area. If there is a catwalk and steps present, you want to make sure that to mention that that catwalk is not bent, cracked, or broken, and that it's properly mounted to the frame. And the same thing with the steps. Steps are not cracked, bent, or broken, properly mounted to the frame. In this case, there's not a catwalk here, so you don't have to mention it. If there is, make sure you mention it. But like I said, I think that that's it. I think I got I think I got everything that I needed to get on the uh, for the outside of the pre-trip inspection. Feel free to leave me a note in the comments to make sure that if I did miss something, please tell me because I really want to try not to miss as very little things as possible. Um, but the way that I kind of learned this was just. If it leaks, if it's something that has fluid in it, it's gonna leak. If it's something that has a that has a belt on it, it's gonna tear. If it's something that, excuse me, if it's something that's metal, it could it could crack or bend. So just kind of keep those things in mind. Uh, if it's got bolts, they get loose. So make sure that you kind of keep those things in mind when you're kind of looking at these systems and you're doing your pre-trip. Is that if you keep those little things in mind. You should you shouldn't really miss anything. Um, when I first came here and was looking at this, I was like, "How am I going to remember all this stuff? This is a lot of things to remember." But as I kept kind of working it in my head and deciding to kind of remember and put this whole system together for this, like moving systems, moving away where you're not going to miss things. Like don't don't jump don't jump from one thing to another. Like just like don't don't jump from the top and then go to the bottom and come back. Like kind of move your way 
through a system of things. And then once you get to the things like the wheels and the brake systems and the suspension systems, it's all repetitive information. So once that happens, I mean, you just have to remember not to miss little things like, like don't forget about the mud flaps. Don't forget about your DOT tape. Don't forget about rivets. Don't forget about, you know, certain little things that you want to make sure you don't forget about. Lights. Don't forget about any of the lights. Make sure you're mentioning the condition of all the lights, right, that you point them out, that you know where they're at. Um, and I think it should be okay. I mean, I got my test coming in a little over a week. I feel pretty confident about the pre-trip uh, portion of it now. I don't think I have anything to worry about there. I'm going to keep practicing and I'm going to keep going with it to make sure that I got it. But I think I'm pretty good right now. Um, as far as the outside of the truck is concerned, I'm done with the outside of the truck on the pre-trip inspection. So now I'm going to stop the video for just a little bit. And I'm going to come back once I get myself set up inside of a truck. And I'm going to kind of run through what an in-cab inspection is like. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do that here in a second. Uh, one thing, one, one small tidbit to mention is you do see the, the, the windshield reservoir there. That is a requirement when you do your pre-trip inspections for your DVIR when you go out on the road, but it's not a requirement on the CDL exam. At least not here in Missouri, it's not. That's what I was told, is that you don't have to mention the condition of this for the testing purposes, because, you know, I mean, you can if you want, but they're not going to give you any extra credit or anything. You're not going to lose credit for not mentioning this. But when you actually do your pre-trips on the road, you will have to check this and make sure that the condition is, is good. But I wouldn't even worry about that for the test. If, if your purpose is to do this for the test, I, I would pretend it's not there. That's what doesn't confuse you. I don't know. Maybe you want to make it good practice and just do it anyway, so that's up to you. But, yep, so I'm going to go on the inside, and we're going to do an in-cab inspection to finish this out.